So there's a number of videos popping up on YouTube at the minute testing various different classes and their power when it comes to leveling. On the stream the other day we had a little bit of a mess around playing the Warlock and we quickly discovered that Warlock leveling is utterly bonkers and disgusting. I made a video a while ago actually fear crafting how good Warlock are gonna be but I honestly didn't realise they were gonna be this good. At this point you may as well be playing Retail World of Warcraft, they are that overpowered. As a Warlock you are able to continuously pull mobs non-stop with your dots and you've got insane healing to keep yourself topped up. They are just utterly unstoppable. It's actually quite a challenge to get your character killed. And now for an extremely interesting fact that will put you on the edge of your seat when you find it out. Apparently only 25% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So do me a solid guys, help me get 90,000 by the end of the year. Anyway, let's get on with it. So I should clarify that I'm doing this with pretty good gear. Black Temple gear with a couple of Sunwell pieces. But honestly, you can do this with fairly half decent gear. You just won't be able to pull as much. But how on earth is this even possible? So the first big change in Wrath is how Siphon Life or Siphon Life is combined into the Corruption ability. And it heals an absolute truckload. And you can increase the effects with Glyph of Siphon Life. This increases the healing you get from Siphon Life by 25% and then you can magnify that even further with Demon Armor, which is a further 20% increase. You also get a flat 15 increase from Shadow Mastery, and obviously there's a number of talents in the Infliction Tree that boost the damage of Corruption, and therefore boost the damage of its healing. Basically, when you put one Corruption on a mob, the healing you're gonna get from Corruption on that mob will out-heal the DPS that that mob is gonna do to you. You do start to run into issues when you have way too many of the mobs attacking you at once, which is why you have to really stay on the move, because then the mobs are dealing damage to you faster than Siphon Life is actually healing you. So what do you do to actually achieve this? First of all, the key thing really is to stay on the move. If you stop moving, you are bang in trouble. But the concept is very simple. You run around, tab targeting, or even click targeting, put Curse of Agony and Corruption on a target, and then that will guarantee kill that enemy. And you can do this on theoretically as many mobs as you want. You do run into issues sometimes, but with practice you shouldn't have any issues because again, if you keep moving, you keep kiting, definitely with your movement speed enchant on the boots, as long as you keep moving you should be fan tabby dozy. In fact, it got to a point where I'd actually run into the mobs and start hell firing just to kill them that little bit faster, although that does work out to be a little less efficient. Now I made a rough calculation, obviously what I'd have to do is get add-ons on the Raffalich King Beta to make more accurate calculations, and I will do that when it is possible, but we're definitely getting over 800,000 experience per hour by doing this. And that's roughly two hours per level. So really it's no wonder that the world first level 80 back in the day was in fact a warlock, and he actually had a pocket healer to help him do that. Now I farmed at this location in Dragonblight where there's a load of ghoul mobs in a little ravine and the mobs pretty much spawn instantly after you've killed them all, which doesn't take very long at all, then pretty much by the time you've topped your mana rope, well, another one will spawn and then you can just keep going. Obviously there are some limitations to this, obviously there's competition for actually killing these mobs in the first place and finding a good location, this isn't the only good location that you can get, there's a number of insane grinding locations in Raffa Lich King. But the thing is, you know, if we're specifically talking about launch, first of all, you can trick the server into putting you on a high level by going to Northrend later, by turning in some quests in Outland first. And like the TBC Classic launch, from my experience, I had barely any competition for killing mobs in the open world because there was barely anyone around. And say, for instance, you're on a Alliance dominated server, you'd probably be able to kill a specific mob that only Horde have quests to kill that mob for. And obviously this is only a launch limitation. If you're doing this at a different time later in Raffalich King's lifetime, you're going to be absolutely laughing. Now I'll show you all the important talents that I have starting with a demonology tree. So first of all, I'm obviously going to go down for Soul Link. That's 20% damage reduction. Cannot complain at that. It's very, very useful. Now the increased stamina on Demonic Embrace is quite nice. Just a nice thing to have. And honestly, fellow Synergy, I mean, I'm not really using the pet to take damage, so this is kind of a bit redundant, to be fair. You might want to go for Improved Health Stone instead. 
and I've got Fell Vitality. And we will be using Demonic Brutality. I think I'd actually prefer to max this out, actually, rather than just get two points in it, because I will be using the Demonic Sacrifice quite a lot. I'll explain why a little bit later. From here, I'm getting all the, you know, basic Affliction talents, Improved Corruption, Curse of Agony, Improved Life Tap, very, very useful. You will be using a lot of Life Tap. Soul Siphon for when you actually need to top your health up. It's very, very useful. I am also using Improved Drain Soul because sometimes like when the mobs are getting low health, you kind of I use this little macro that automatically targets the closest mob near me and drains souls, and I can ping pong drain soul between all the mobs and get loads of mana back. Fell concentration, obviously pretty mandatory if you want to actually get any healing from drain life. Nightfall is very nice here. It will proc a lot. You have a lot of corruptions rolling on, so it's near enough active most of the time, and it's good at just getting those mobs down a little bit easier. Grim Reach, pretty essential to get bigger pulls going. Shadow Mastery, Contagion again, just damage increasing and Malediction as well, it's all just damage increasing talents. We get Dark Pact, we're going to be using that pretty much whenever it's available rather than using Life Tap. You know, you always use Dark Pact over using Life Tap because obviously Life Tap drops your health, although it is always important to be Life Tapping to keep your health, you know, not at 100% because then otherwise you are wasting healing and therefore wasting potential mana regeneration. Improved Howl of Terror, this is pretty mandatory as well, very very useful for when you're taking on non-undead enemies to give yourself a little bit of leeway so you can escape and not get dazed. It's also very important to get Pandemic, it's going to cause your corruption ticks to actually crit, big big damage increase. I've tested builds that went deeper into demonology rather than going for these talents and yeah this, this was so much better. Going deeper into Affliction, getting Pandemic killed the mobs much faster and therefore just generated XP much faster. Because I did actually test a build with mana feed and honestly it's just it's just not needed. I thought it'd be quite good but it's honestly really not needed. You're gonna be able to life tap to your heart's content so yeah it's not an absolute essential that you get mana feed. Now these are the glyphs that I'm going for. First of all glyph of siphon life. Pretty mandatory. I wouldn't want to get anything other than that because of the increased healing and especially when you combine it with demon armor is very very nice. I mean, you can use Fell Armor if you want, you really gotta feel like whatever is better for you, but it's very different Fell Armor in Wrath, since it now scales off Spirit, so to make Fell Armor, you know, good, you will need to actually get a lot of Spirit gear, but none of my TPC gear has Spirit on it. And the damage reduction on Demon Armor results to about 10% extra physical damage reduction, which is also very, very nice. And then for my second talent, I've gone for Glyph of Corruption. Now, this means that you have two separate dice rolls for Shadow Trance to occur and it roughly works out at about 7.84% chance to get on a Corruption Tick, a cheeky instant Shadow Bolt. And with this glyph, it does help you get the kills much, much easier because you're running around doing instant Shadow Bolts, really cannot complain. You may be thinking, what about Quick Decay as a talent? Well, first of all, Haste isn't working on the beta at the minute, so I can't test how good that is. Secondly, it requires Wrath of Lich King material, so you're not going to be able to get that at launch. However, again, when you're leveling a Warlock later in Wrath of Lich King's lifetime, and you can get that glyph of Quick Decay, probably go for that instead, to be honest. So, why am I using the Void Walker? I mean, you can use something like an Imp or another pet if you want, but really, I'm not using the pet for damage that much, because it's fairly insuperior to my dot damage and it's it's just not needed really and with the pet running around chasing mobs pulling aggro it's just it's just annoying i just keep the pet on passive and i keep the void walker because of sacrifice sacrifice has been totally changed in raffle lich king it won't kill the pet anymore just take a portion of its health away and this is very very useful for when you're in situations where you are taking a little bit too much damage and you want to keep yourself protected and obviously it prevents you from getting dazed which makes running around much easier Plus, sometimes, like, in between pulls, I like to pull one mob, put on my Affliction effects on, put a Divine Sacrifice up so I don't take any damage, and then one Drain Life pretty much should top my health up because I'm not taking any damage. I'm just getting full, huge heals. And when it comes to consumers, guys, I'm using, you know, all the good stuff like Flask of Pure Death. I'm going to use Weapon Oils. Remember, Weapon Oils are uh, useful on items lower than 165 item level. And, obviously, some cheeky Blackened Basilisks. And yeah, guys, the uh, leveling on a walk is just totally mental. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Let's get some discussions going. I'll make the extra effort to reply to comments on this video because I do find this topic very, very interesting. Anyway, my name is Mini Goblin. To the next video, ciao.